Hello everyone, uh, this is Dick Sullivan of Bostick and Sullivan. Today is the 25th of November 2011. Uh, you're looking at right now my assistant, uh, Madeline Willis, who is a research assistant that volunteers some of her time to work on these processes. Uh, and today we are going to make guanidine ferric oxalate. This is a key element, key pro, uh, chemical in the making of an athenotype. Uh, we have other videos here at YouTube on the athenotype and we're updating them at all times here. Uh, so I'm using Maddie to uh, mix up some guanidine ferric oxalate. Now, the first, she's going to follow my instructions and I'm going to zoom down so we can see what she's doing and her pretty face is no longer here to see. Okay, now, the first thing Madeline's going to do is take 26 grams of ferric oxalate and put it into 100 milliliters of water. We're using distilled water, although it is probably not necessary. Now this is standard ferric oxalate. Uh, Bostick and Sullivan is known for making ferric oxalate. Uh, we make a very pure oxalic acid free ferric oxalate. Uh, I've even had major printers of platinum prints uh, claim that they calibrate their systems to our ferric oxalate. Now it's barely soluble in water uh, and typically uh, it would take a half an hour or more a microwave would help speed it up, but this process uses some oxalic acid as well. So we're going to add 26, uh, what's it say there, 25 oh, grams, 25 grams. 25 grams of oxalic acid. Uh, this will not uh, give us the bubbles yet. While we were rehearsing this, uh, I got a baking soda vinegar reaction here by dumping one into the other too fast. <laughs> uh, so when we get to the next stage, you do not want to do that. Okay, Maddie, uh, now we can add the guanidine uh, carbonate to 100 milliliters of water. And I think we got it written down there. It is 36 grams of guanidine carbonate. Yes. Now, this is an interesting compound. Uh, its major use in modern industry is in hair straighteners. Uh, but it was originally discovered as a component of fat guano. That's why it's called guanidine ferric oxalate. Uh, the fact that its original origins are from bat guano has been uh, no end of jokes uh, at the Bostick and Sullivan. We call it BS ferric oxalate here for Bostick and Sullivan ferric oxalate, but uh, you can call it bat stuff ferric oxalate if you wish. Now, we have a alkali here and a very acidic solution, and as we all learned in elementary school, uh, and I'm, I'm sure Madeline has taught this to her students at the Santa Domingo Pueblo. Uh, have you ever done a, a vinegar baking soda? Uh, we explode volcanoes okay. at the end of the year. Okay, we well you're living in an area of extinct volcanoes that were active about 12,000 years ago, which in geo geologic time is just yesterday. Okay, so now she's going to take the guanidine ferric oxalate, the guanidine carbonate solution and uh, put put it in here, put the, the ferric oxalate in there first. Okay. We need a, a little bit larger beaker here because we're going to get some foam. And... There's a lot at the bottom. That oh, okay. Scrape it so. out. Well, I think what we can do is add some, here, here's a way to do this, add some of the guanidine into that beaker very slowly and you'll see, yes, you'll see some bubbles form, won't be radical, 
Uh, the first reaction color is very dark, uh, dark brown. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and just add the rest of it in there to get what's off the. Yeah, that. You got it. Now you can add that alkali. This is sort of like baking soda and vinegar. Uh, slowly with stirring, pour it into the. Now, oxalic acid is poisonous. Uh, any of the oxalate, now you see the vinegar reaction going on. Uh, so if you dump that in there all at once, <clears throat> we would have a overflow on the table. Careful, Maddie, careful. I am. Okay. I'm watching. Um, the oxalic acid is poisonous. Uh, but what do we mean by poisonous? That's sort of a catch-all term for it ain't good. Uh, one of the things that toxicologists, people who study poisons and deal with them, say is the dose makes the makes the uh, poison. Uh, we typically, if you have a good diet, you will be eating probably a good amount of oxalic acid in your weekly diet. Uh, it is what makes green leafy vegetables uh, have that bitter taste. Uh, it has been calculated that 20 pounds of spinach is enough to kill a person, a normal sized human being. Mm. Now imagine trying to eat 20 pounds of spinach uh, yes, the oxalic acid is poisonous. It's part of uh, the organic acids that you get in foods all the time. Citric acid with citrus fruits, uh, malic acid uh, with uh, apples, green apples are tart, that's because of the malic acid. But this one happens to be poisonous and the way it kills you, if it does, uh, if you have an overdose of it, is that uh, it uh, creates calcium oxalate, which is a powder, and it jams up the little thingies in your kidneys that filter your blood. Uh, one of the cures for that is something else we use around here is EDTA, ethylene diamine tetracetic acid tetrasodium. Pay attention, there'll be a quiz after this. Uh, and uh, But your body produces a compound similar to EDTA which if you're